This is a medium difficulty GMAT problem solving question. Classify this one as a 650 level question it's from the topic inequalities. A very useful question in terms of understanding the framework to solve questions of this nature. What range of values of x will satisfy the inequality 15x minus 2 upon x is greater than 1? This is the expression given to us. Before we set about solving this, I would like to impress upon one very important fact, something that you should avoid. If you have an x term, a variable in the denominator of an expression, the default thing is, for example, if I had a 4 by x is equal to a 12, what is the value of x? We'll cross multiply this x, bring this 12 down, we'll say x is equal to 4 upon 12 or 1 by 3. This is perfectly all right when it is an equation. But when it comes to an inequality, the same thing had we had a 4 upon x is greater than 12, watch out before you cross multiply. When you are cross multiplying, and saying that let's say 4 by 12 is greater than x, you have assumed that x takes positive values. Only when you are multiplying both sides or you are cross multiplying with a positive number, will the sign of the inequality stay intact. Had x taken negative values, we are essentially by cross multiplying, multiplying both sides of this inequality by a negative number, in which case the sign of the inequality should have switched. x being a variable could take positive values, could take negative values without accounting for the fact that it can take negative values we just find out a range of values we are actually not evaluating the proper solution set so the best thing is to avoid cross multiplying when you have a variable can you still solve it yes you can keep the sign of the inequality intact saying that x is greater than zero switch the sign of the inequality and evaluate for x is negative but more often than not we will not do that so the best thing to say is do not cross multiply when you have a variable in the denominator then how do we go about it we're going to do that here. Bring everything to one side to start with. So right side of this inequality becomes a zero. Again, that's again a valuable tip. Keeping the right side as zero is much easier to evaluate. You can check for something being positive or negative a lot more easily than checking out whether something is greater than one or greater less than one. So always keep the right hand side as zero. So you're going to check for either the number being positive, this expression becoming positive or the expression becoming negative. That's that much easier. Let's start by basically rewriting this expression. We're going to take x as a common denominator. If x is a common denominator for this entire expression, the first term becomes 15x square minus a 2 minus x. This entire thing is greater than 0. We're going to rewrite it to resemble our usual ax square plus bx plus c, the numerator component. So this becomes 15x square minus x minus 2 divided by x is greater than 0. The product of the first and the last term is a minus 30. The middle term is a minus 1. The coefficient of x is minus 1. So essentially, let's split the middle term such that the sum of the two parts is equal to minus 1 and the product of the two parts is equal to minus 30. The coefficients alone I'm taking. So essentially, this minus 1 gets split as minus 6 and plus 5. So this would become 15x square minus 6x plus 5x minus 2 divided by an x is greater than 0. So this entire term now is only a minus x. The product of these two components is a minus 30x square, which is the product of the first and the last term. Let's take 3x common from the first and the second part of this expression. So 3x taken common outside will leave us with a 5x minus 2. We'll take a 1 common from these two because nothing else is common. So that's a 5x minus 2 divided by x is greater than 0. So it essentially factorizes as 5x minus 2 times 3x plus 1 divided by x is greater than 0. So this entire expression, we have rewritten it to become this way. Now that we have got this entire polynomial expression in this form, identify the zeros of this polynomial. What do we mean by zeros of the polynomial? Zeros of the polynomial are the places where each of these expressions is going to become 0. For a moment, keep this in mind. We are not going to take those values which are going to make it 0. We are going to identify where it becomes 0. What does it mean by it becomes zero at that point? Essentially, this curve, whatever is a curve, is going to either move from the negative to the positive territory at that point, or is going to move from positive to the negative territory at this point. We are interested in finding out when this expression is in the positive territory, above the x-axis. So if you can find out points where it is likely to become zero, then you can check for a value less than that and for a value greater than that, and check out whether it's moving from left to right in the negative to positive or it's moving from positive to negative and pick those values where it stays positive which is what this inequality is all about so it's set about doing zeros are 5x minus 2 becomes 0 then x is equal to a 2 by 5 
when x is equal to 2 by 5, this component becomes 0. So it's called one of the zeros of this polynomial. We are not going to say x is 2 by 5. We are saying identifying where it cuts it. That's what. Keep that in mind. Because especially in the denominator, when I'm going to say x is equal to 0 is one of the zeros, many of you will be troubled to saying that how can the denominator become 0? I'm never going to make x a 0. I'm taking 0 as a point and looking for a value little less than 0 and for a value little more than 0. I'm never going to substitute a 0. So do not worry about it. The next value is when 3x plus 1 is a 0. If 3x plus 1 is a 0, then the value of x becomes x is equal to minus 1 by 3. That's one of the zeros. And here, when will this part become 0? We are not making the denominator 0. This is going to become 0 when x is equal to a 0. So the zeros of this polynomial are three numbers, 2 by 5, minus 1 by 3, and 0. So step 1, what we did is we got everything to one side and rewrote it in a factorized form. That's step number 1. Step 2, we have identified the zeros of this polynomial. Step 3 will give us the answer. We can find out the intervals in which this inequality is going to hold good. I'm going to start writing all of these zeros in the ascending order. Minus 1 by 3, 0 and 2 by 5. Let's plot it on a number line. See, this is 0. Minus 1 by 3 is going to be to the left of 0. And 2 by 5 is going to be to the right of 0. We have four intervals where we need to check. 1 for a value less than minus 1 by 3. The second interval is for a value between minus 1 by 3 and 0. The third one between 0 and 2 by 5. And fourth one for a value greater than 2 by 5. What is the idea? It's either going to be this way or it is going to be this way. So this is the point where it is going to become 0. I'm going to check whether here it is positive or negative. If it is positive here, the inequality holds good. If it is negative here, the inequality does not hold good. It's as simple as that. Let's start with the first interval. The first interval is for a value of x which is less than minus 1 by 3. Less than minus 1 by 3. Minus 1 by 3 is a minus 0 0.33. Let's take a very convenient number to plug in. I'm going to go with a value of x equals minus 1 and check out whether this inequality will hold good. You can substitute in any step from this point forward till the factorized step. We'll go with this. It's an easy place to plug it in. 15x minus 2 by x will find out the value when x is equal to minus 1. So this becomes when x is equal to minus 1. 15 times minus 1, minus 2 divided by minus 1. That's the value of this expression. 15 times minus 1 is a minus 15. Minus of minus will make it as plus, plus 2. This is equal to minus 13. We need this expression to be greater than 1. When x is a minus 1, this expression is not greater than 1. So the inequality does not hold good. So interval 1, it does not hold good. Pause the video here. Take a value between minus 1 by 3 and 0. Take a value between 0 and 2 by 5. Take a value greater than 2 by 5 and run through the same process and check out where all you are getting the value of this expression to be greater than 1. Wherever the value is greater than 1, those are the cases where this inequality is going to hold good. Usually pick friendly numbers. Don't pick some very difficult number to work with. Pick a friendly number in that interval. Substitute it. Find out. Get the answer. That's the final answer. Come back to the video. We'll quickly check out whether our methods match. Have you found out the answer? I'm going to start with the second interval. The second interval is one where it lies between minus 1 by 3 and 0. So I'm going to pick a value of x which is greater than minus 1 by 3 and less than 0. Notice this, I'm not taking a minus 1 by 3, neither have I taken a 0. I'm plugging in a value which is greater than minus 1 by 3 and something that's less than 0. Minus 1 by 3 is a minus 0 0.33. This is a 0. So I'm going to take again a very convenient number. I'm going to go with x equals minus 0 0.1. That's between minus 0 0.33 and 0. So when x is a minus 0 0.1, plug it in here. This becomes 15 times minus 0 0.1 minus 2 divided by minus 0 0.1. 15 times minus 0 0.1 is a minus 1.5. Minus of minus will make this a plus. 2 by 1 is a 2. 2 by 0 0.1 is a 20. Minus 1.5 plus 20 will give us an answer which is plus 18.5. Is it greater than 1? Yes, it is greater than 1. So inequality holds good in the second interval. The second interval is x lies between minus 1 by 3 and a 0. Let's move to the third interval. We'll use a number line to again help us. Let's go with 0 here, is minus 1 by 3 and a 2 by 5. We realized in the first interval, which is less than minus 1 by 3, it did not hold good. The second interval between minus 1 by 3 and a 0, it was working. It's a part of the solution set. The third interval we are going to evaluate is between 0 and 2 by 5. So x in the third interval is going to take a value which is positive greater than 0 and it is less than 2 by 5. 2 by 5 is a 0 
So again, going to plug in a very friendly number, which is 0 0.1. Plug it in here. The expression becomes 15 times 0 0.1 minus 2 divided by 0 0.1. 15 times 0 0.1 is a 1.5 minus 2 by 0 0.1 is a 20, the 0 0.1. So the answer becomes minus 18.5. It's a negative number, definitely not greater than 1. So it fails in the third interval. Third interval is not a part of our solution set. Let's look at the last interval. X takes a value which is greater than 2 by 5. 2 by 5 we know is a 0 0.4. So let's plug in a number greater than 0 0.4. I'm going to go with x equals 1. Don't go for a 0 0.5. 1 is much easier to plug in than a 0 0.5. So here x equals 1. The expression becomes 15 times 1 minus 2 by 1. 15 times 1 is a 15, minus 2 by 1 is a 2, which is equal to 13, which is greater than 1. So inequality holds good in the fourth interval. So what's the solution set? You can take any value between minus 1 by 3 and 0, and for values which are greater than 2 by 5. So solution set for this is minus 1 by 3, less than x, less than 0. It lies between minus 1 by 3 and 0. Union, x takes a value which is greater than 2 by 5. Quickly run through this entire thing in a minute in a printed form and consolidate this learning. Starting by rewriting this expression, taking x as a common denominator. So we get a quadratic expression. The numerator of the quadratic expression factorizes as follows. This is just the numerator component alone. 5x minus 2 into 3x plus 1. So the expression becomes 5x minus 2 times 3x plus 1 upon x greater than 0. We are identifying the zeros of this polynomial which are when this term becomes 0, which will be a 2 by 5, when this part becomes a 0, which is minus 1 by 3, and the denominator becomes a 0, we are not ever going to substitute x as a 0, we are finding out the zeros of each of this component, which is equal to 0. Going to go with a number line, 0, minus 1 by 3, and 2 by 5, picking the first interval, which is a number which is less than minus 1 by 3, taking x equals minus 1, we realize the value of this entire expression is a minus 13, which is not greater than 1. So inequality fails in the first interval. It does not hold good here. Let's move on to the second interval. We're picking a value which is between minus 1 by 3 and 0, going with a minus 0 0.1. The expression becomes 18.5. Inequality holds good here. So second interval is a part of the solution set. The third interval for us is a value between 0 and 2 by 5. 2 by 5 is a 0 0.4. So going with 0 0.1 as a value to substitute, the value becomes minus 18.5. Minus 18.5 is not greater than 1, so inequality fails here. It does not hold good in the third interval. Looking at the first, fourth interval, which is x greater than 2 by 5, 2 by 5 is a 0 0.4. So I'm picking a number greater than 0 0.4, which is the fourth interval, taking x to be equal to a 1, get the value of the expression to be a 13, so inequality holds good here. Two green zones between minus 1 by 3 and 0 and two, a value greater than 2 by 5. So minus 1 by 3 to 0 is one range of values. Union, x greater than 2 by 5 is the solution to this inequality. Answer choice D is the correct answer. So quick recap about the method. One, most importantly, do not cross multiply. Avoid cross multiplying when you have an x term in the denominator. Take everything to one side. So you're going to always evaluate for something being positive or something being negative. Then factorize the expressions, identify the zeros of the polynomial. Plot the zeros of the polynomial on a number line and pick the ranges of values that you need to substitute to check out. Always find friendly numbers in each of these ranges. Plug it in in any step starting from the original inequality expression to the one that you finally got down in a factorized form. All of those will give you the same answer. It's going to say you an S or a no, whether it holds good in the interval or it's not going to hold good in that interval. Before you leave, I'm going to ask you to do two things. One, sign up as a trial user at wzko.in slash core. The URL shown on the screen. WZKO.in slash core is Visaco's online quant course. It's one of the most comprehensive and affordable quant courses that you'll see. Get started with statistics and averages. It'll take you about six to eight hours to complete that entire topic. Build momentum to your GMAT preparation. Get used to the teaching methodology, the UI, UX. If you find the course helping you out, then you can basically pay and unlock the remaining topics behind the paywall. Second, I would want you to subscribe to this channel, youtube.com slash Visaco and turn on notifications most importantly. Best wishes for your GMAT preparation. Until next time, stay healthy, stay safe, and stay motivated.